Welcome to panel three, everyone. We're very excited about this one in particular, financing and impacts of wind projects in La Guajira. Um, I'll introduce our, our, our panelists. Um, we're very grateful to have you here, beginning with um, Mr. Nemesio Royce Garzon, El Gobernador de La Guajira, the Governor of La Guajira State, along with Maria Victoria Guarin, the Senior Investment Officer from the World Bank's IFC, International Finance Corporation, Daniel Arango, who hopefully will be joining us shortly. He's a Director of Energy and Natural Resources for Bank Colombia. Federico Bianchi, Sales Manager for South America for the Nordex Group. Uh, Mehdi Habdi, Sales and Marketing Director for Latin America for Siemens Gamesa Renewable Energy. And last but not least, our moderator, Regina Ranieri, the South America Business Development Manager for UL. I will pass it over to you. Thank you so much, Emerson. Muchísimas gracias. Thank you so much. Thank you all. Very good outlooks. My name is Regina Ranieri. I am responsible for South America. It's such an honor for me to be able to develop this as part of Colombia as a whole. Today, we're going to be talking about funding of this renewable energy project, specifically in La Guajira. We know that Colombia is now on the spotlight is a well we have the spotlight as part of the latin american region so we're going to be able to address this from different points today we're going to have a very important point as well and the technology and how to fund so also we were talking about what emerson was saying we're going to have a brief overview on the actual and current situation uh, regarding this boom of renewable energy. So now this is going to be available maybe for comments. I would like, I would like to, and also, and also to check this. So let's see if Nemesio is available or not. We start with the panel, Maria Victoria Guarín. Excellent. Thank you, Nemesio. I think that you have your mic muted. We wait for security protocols. Nemesio, please unmute your uh, mic to start your presentation. Victoria, do you want to start now? Hi, good morning to all of you. Thank you for the invitation. I work in IFC, part of the World Bank of the IFC has wide experience financing renewable energy projects. We have financed over 10 innovations projects worldwide. Uh, half of it has been done in the last four year time. So we see the possibility of financing projects that are being developed in Colombia. Thank you so much. Daniel Arango, Ban Colombia. Hi, good morning. Hi, good morning to all of you. Thank you for the invitation. It's a great pleasure to be with you in this panel. I am in charge of energy and natural resources at Bank Colombia. It is in this area where we have taken uh, examining these projects of ener renewable energy, including those of the Guajira. We are highly interested in promoting the development of renewable energies in Colombia. Um, I don't know if you saw, but we just received the award for the most sustainable bank from the Dow Jones Sustainability Index, us as well as a bank with a very important portfolio on the electrical sector and the guidelines that we have on sustainability. We are highly interested in participating as Colombian bank, obviously. 
our interest is very high in promoting the development of all in all the regions of our country. So yes, we are highly interested and we are committed to supporting these initiatives. Thank you so much, Daniel Nemesio. Nemesio, can you confirm that you can unmute? Nemesio, can you unmute? If not, we will continue. Mr. Nemesio wanted to give its incentives on the region and he wanted to express the will of the Wajira to receive private investments. Nemesio, you can have the floor now. Yes, uh, I am was having a little bit of trouble with my audio. I want to thank you everybody for the invitation and tell you once again, as I have been doing it, in all the scenarios where we have been talking about renewable energies, the gate commitment on the the side of the Guajira Department on this new chapter of development for the country, but particularly for our region. The arrival of new energies to our department is in a historic opportunity in order to shape an economic reality because we depend essentially on carbon. Uh, the future of the Guajira will be concentrated in several topics in addition to mining, and then we have also tourism. And uh, the purpose of this administration on the department, I have been holding this position for four years, to receive all the support for private companies can come and invest, not only come and invest, but also develop the different wind parks in the region. Challenges, there are many, you all know them. We have been holding so many meetings and the challenges go from the stand point of logistics, consultations with co indigenous communities, the challenge of connectivity of roads. Uh, we have also challenges of uh, water availability in those communities that are so far away. And the wind farms are with Ibia in Manawi, where we don't have that much water supplies. And that is a very important challenge. And there, that is where, as an administration of the department, along with the national government, have to create initiatives, not only to make that this renewable energy projects become a reality in your territory, but at the same time, that those developments and include all those components that we are eagerly waiting for in our community. And I have to start by employment. Paid employment is one of the greatest challenges. It is um, area that should not go to the difficult that it went in the past. We need to be able and capable of participating in these you know, projects. That is why we have created a new initiative that we share with the national government with whom we have been working closely and to create the center of innovation at the Guajira Department, a huge investment that will be made by the Department of the Guajira with a center of uh, science and technology a training center where the government and the private will be participated, but we also will have a universitarian technical force that will be participating in order to have that population duly trained. So at the moment that it is required by any of the energy companies has a need, we can provide them with the right talents. There is a challenge as, uh, that is transportation, as I was saying. We will be jointly with the national government. The president will be announcing shortly. We have been structuring road connectivity in High Guajira, from Uribia, Puerto Bolivia. So everybody uh, to understand is to go through the desert vertically all the way to the sea. Great advantage for the first parks will not be ready yet, but for future parks, they will have that great advantage that have a road that is appropriate, uh, fully paved, that will enable to have 
additional economic advantages and that fosters development in the region in road connectivity not only inside the, the department but with other uh, departments as well whatever requires we will be investing a lot of money uh, the ministry of the transportation is also involved with the national government we will have uh, also port services other important challenges on the social side and that is to accompany the Minister of Indigenous Affairs to accompany all the renewable energy companies. So consultations will be processes where they can reach agreements in a faster way and that agreements will be win-win that will share the development of indigenous communities. Uh, indigenous communities, and I tell you that quite frankly, ask within those agreements Things that will not be changing their social condition. And they are by saying much more importance to things like instead of thinking of having access to health, or, um, running water, or energy, we want to persuade those communities for, so those requests really go to the core of improving the life conditions of indigenous communities. There's a great commitment there with the Ministry of Mines and Energy. We share that purpose that we cannot make the same mistake that happened to the Guajira with gas. We produce natural gas that is consumed in the entire country through a platform that we have in the sea that's called Chuchupa, and the population that is the Pajaro community, municipality, for 20 years didn't have access to gas. That cannot happen again to all of us. And that is the initiative that we have. The communities around where the wind parks will be installed will improve their life conditions. We have different options. We have been creating a structure of solar energy isolated that are not connected so all the communities will have access and that we within the department that will be producing a great percentage of this energy mix at a national level we can provide them with energy and reduce the gap of energy coverage that is the largest one that we have in the entire domestic territory. So there are the challenges, initiatives that we have at the Department of the Guajira, a long process. As you all know, I have been mentioning Tuiné. I think that is the first part that will be operating December next year. That will be the most difficult one because the first one is where we start to open the roads to see truly what are the needs and re specific requirements that are needed for the parks that will come in the future. So we will, all, with the first one, we will be acquiring experiences. The rest will be easier. But this is very good for the country, and we have to do things very well. We cannot neglect this great opportunity of social development in our department, and that is why I want to restate our commitment on, on behalf of the Department of Guajira to support in whatever is needed for this park of renewable energies be parks not only that will be bringing energy, but also bringing development full. Yes, you have identified very well the challenges. I think that you will be dealing with them very successful. You, we have the banks in this panel that will be working constructively to make possible of those access that will be opening other markets in Argentina. It happened alike. They created employment, technical capability to satisfy the job positions, and that will be achieved in a successful way. Thank you, Nemesio, for your time. We will love to have you for the rest of the panel, if your time so allows you. Uh, now we have uh, Federico Bianchi for, 
for Nordex. Thank you. Thank you to the organizers for the opportunity. I'm Federico Bianchi, a sales manager for South America for the Nordex Group. It's been four years that I joined the company. Currently, I am working with responsibility for countries such as Argentina, Chile, Peru, Ecuador, and Colombia. Grupo Nordex is a company that's 100% on high power energy, 35 years of uh, history in wind, present in over 40 countries, particular case of Colombia, very interesting story. We were, we had the Hypirachi wind park in the country. We have a 200 megabytes on it. Execution is the first large scale project that has been closed in the country under this new mechanism of ini initiative towards renewable energies. We repeated a um, similar experience in Argentina. We also brought a project there and we had the full support of the organization for the new incoming to the country uh, will be so successful. Thank you, Federico. Hi, good morning. I want to thank you for your uh, invitation to this uh, panel. We are an important part of the entire process. I believe that we can contribute with our know-how. On my side, I'm the Director of Trade and Sales Marketing for Latin America, except for Brazil. Uh, background in Siemens Gamesa. I have been working several markets throughout the world. Since uh, four years, I have been in the Latin American market and Colombia, obviously. Undoubtedly will be that great market in the future for Latin America. Undoubtedly, thank you, thank you so much on my side. Uh, we are a company the and renewable agents in all the phases of stages of value with the financing we have been doing all type of financial structures uh, giving consultancy to the banking and during the constructions for the sponsor and asset management to accompany the reform of the wind parks so if you like we are going to be starting by the banks methodology that we are using renewable energy in the most of the countries how are associated credits on uh, renewable energies being um, provided in colombia and i just want to let you know that the government has left the room thank you I see that there are several wind projects that are being developed in Guajira, like 1,200 MGs as a result of the bid on PPA, another 500 that they are developing on the bid for reliability charges. All projects or large projects are being done by large promoters, um, incumbent, electricity on renewables. What we are observing due to many of the initiatives around the project is that Epsa Yenel would be thinking to finance the projects at a corporate level because of uncertainties and the tax benefits that they will have in their balance if they finance them under the scheme that provides tax benefits, tax release. That is why it is important for them to keep them in their balance. But at the moment they do the investment, 
if they have corporate benefits of other type, they will be benefited by those tax reliefs. And well, obviously, they will be doing it such and they will not be asking for outside credit. Uh, project finance. Project finance are important, and I'm not going to focus on that right now, but I think that we can be talking about it. Uh, ETR will certainly be looking for project finance facility, but... Okay, Victoria, we will be talking uh, further on about the particularities in Colombia. Daniel, from a local bank, can you tell us about project finance or corporate credit of, for uh, renewable energies? According to what Maria Victoria has been saying, yes, the structure, the preferred structure to, is to have project finance structures. Corporate financing is very, very important because of the incentives and the uncertainty associated to the projects. So, yes, we as banks, we like to do project finance and we are prepared for it. But many of the developers have also that option as part of their alternative to develop those projects. So certainly we will see many different modes of development on the bank side. Yes, there is cap capacity to do both. It will be reduced on the analysis and the preferences of the developers, which is the type of financing that they choose. Okay, we have just done project financing, financing directly the project, and the debt is the sale covered by the sales of energy. And the corporate credits that Maria Victoria and Daniel are exposing are the sponsor to IPP that is developing that. Associated of risk to the assets that will be used in second instance. The ones that the project has its PPAs and the construction starts, that is where they ask the tech Technologies to facilitate the wind generators and part of the financing. And here, Federico, I'll start with you. What happens with the ACAs and how are they involved in the project financing? Us as technologists in the financial consultant for a project, we support the customer on financing. We provide them a commercial bank uh, access and credit institution access. What is the pr project? The ECA will cover political risk and commercial risk of the project in exchange of a uh, premium. What is, is it important to be a technologist on this? The ECAs, there are different types of ECAs, ECAs. Normally, it has a requirement of local manufacturing in the ECA country by our sourcing. We have access to that on Spain, India. So an Spanish guard will say that part of the component will be manufactured in um, Spain, Willer Hermes has 30% of manufacturing in Germany. The advantage that we have is from Nordics. We have a global network of suppliers in the different hubs and the different components on the countries of origin, being capable of complying with this minimum requirement of uh, production. Another leg that is relevant in order to have access to an ECA, and I think here technologies has a very important role to play at the moment that we you have the manufacturer of a generator appears with uh, commercial banks in order for that 
contract to be bankable. One of the characteristics of the Nordex group is to reach bankable agreements. We have had very, very good experiences closing project finance in different markets. A relevant issue so to consider NECA, it can go to in the structure of a project financing, but also in its preparation, ECA will provide the bank the certainty to be repaid with cash flow, and there are banks that without an ECA, they will be giving a credit for a certain amount, but when the ECA, they can um, improve their rates. Conclusion, as Nordex Group, we are prepared to provide this facility on exports to the Guajira or any other type of financing that could add the value. Worthwhile mentioning that in addition of a cre export credit agencies, there are reduction bills, structures that facilitates because of flows of funds are taking all the way to the end of the project. We also have experience of working with that type of instrument. And then it will be a pleasure to support the market and be the facilitators in this financing process. The economies uh, will be very happy from now on. I think that this is an important topic because it can create a lot of confusion. The truth of the matter, we cannot say that technologies have the responsibility of having facilitating elements for taxes. So ICAS, as Federico has mentioned, Uh, we can have access to the Spanish, German, or others. They also trust certain technologies with they normally work with. I think that there is a confusion there. But at the end of the line, what is being judged is the project if it is bankable or not. Personally, I had a discussion that uh, that is not your responsibility. There are technologies from another level that are also playing with this. It doesn't mean that if you have a technologist involved or that you have an ECA, you, it doesn't mean that you will go through with your project. You need to see the project, the structure of the project, the experience that you can provide, uh, because that is required. But the resp final responsibility of achieving it or not falls to the owner of the project. On the other side, we have other elements that in Siemens Gamesa, we have the financial leg that is financial services, and yes, we can be involved in. It is a bank that will be promoting that Siemens Gamesa technologies are being bought, but they will be helpful to have it in-house for the negotiation stage or experience in the forums where we participate, we see there's a huge interest for Colombia. Uh, I think this will be facilitating transactions and that is key to work with ECAS. 
and they can have the necessary comfort of what is being done on energy policies in the country, as well as the clear objectives of the projects and the project owners. Thank you, Mehdi. I want to tell you that corporate financing does it work well on local uh, players, but what happens with uh, foreign players? From our standpoint, it is not completely balanced because foreign investors do not have to have this corporate finance, so they would have it at their head. The foreign can only do private projects. What are the uh, specifications of PPA on the projects in the Guajira and the financial cost of the projects? Victoria, since you have the mic open. Go ahead. Well, the specific case of the Guajira projects has to do with interconnection in particular. So, unfortunately, the PPA contract does not mention said risk. And the statement is, since it is a financial contract, if there are delays in which uh, the company will be provided energy, well, they will have backup companies or um, energy uh, supply. But this is important risk for projects because they cannot foresee the delay on the interconnection or the supply. And not all projects in the Guajira depend on the interconnection, but they all require to complete the full interconnection process. So it is a risk that it is difficult to quantify because, and I, I was doing an um, estimate. A hundred mg of wind energy for every month of delay that they cannot supply their energy. And if they have a differential in the PPA price and the energy price at 50, at $500,000 per month. So, to see the dimension of the project and the cost of the project is quite a challenge. You don't know, calculate if you put a surplus on one year or several years, or even in an extreme case, you could have a built project. And since the interconnection, yes, from the stand, view of a contract has flexibilities that are being adapted according to the delays that might may arise according to environmental licensing. A already built project could have a delay of three years or to the infinite. So uh, that is a risk. that the sponsors will have to cover without cut because it cannot be measured. And that is the difficulty that we have there, that it will depend on good forecasting. What is the forecasting? How can you know? It is merely impossible at this moment in time. You know that the line will not be constructed in one day. But you also have the community consultation projects, 
things that will take the time that they need to take and then you are developing the line then you are building the line and then you have to have interconnection with the system yes so there is something that has been more or less foreseen there's an estimate but the companies that are developing the projects are not fully sure that that will be happening exactly as foreseen well I think that it is important to consider all different aspects in order not to have difficulties midway. PPA. I think that that was the risk that was not that clear. Because, yes, we included it as a risk, but without the obligation of supplying energy but be able to cover it with other contracts and that obviously brings a large incertitude difficult to quantify it is clear that we have that issue there and that it requires a specific approach while structuring to have the estimate on those costs and try to figure out what will be the mechanisms that will enable them to assume it efficiently so the banks can back it up and that will, without closing the investment and, well, in the majority of the other risks that have been assessed at the time of the bids, most of them have been distributed. At that time, there were so many discussions who would be the uptaker, who define it. And I think that the government was right because they established some caps to the amount of uh, participation that the different traders could have in the bid. Eventually, the contract becomes a mirror of what the Colombian market is, participation of what the, the participants in the Colombian market have. So that enabled us to go from that great incertitude because before the bid we did not know who were going to take those positions. But the bid is over, now we see who they are, but I highlight this as an item well, that we discussed lengthily and that it was difficult to solve. On the other risk, I do believe that there are so many that will be covering on credit uh, contracts, uh, structure, project financing. They will have typical provisions of, for project finance. And so I believe that with that will be Good. I think that the price risk is a risk that is established on the contracts. There is a good, a very good portion that is assumed of entities with very good credit reputation. So I think that the most complex item is the one that Maria Victoria just mentioned. Obviously, what the government mentioned, the um, difficulties with the community, working with community will require additional efforts, and maybe uh, we will be covering that tomorrow at midday. Technology is the objective of the banks, and you is to maximize uh, investment projects you need to reduce CAPEX and OPEX. How are you preparing on the technological side to work with all this? Federico, do you want to start? Thank you. There are four key elements to maximize. One is the resource. Guajira has a excellent wind source you have meters per second, incredibly good intensity winds that are moderated, 
which enables to have wind turbines of good power from national resources, conditions are there, and it can compete with the resources that we see at a worldwide level. Scale, most of the project that we are working on at the Guajira are be over the 200 mg scale. And the scale is very important in order to achieve a optimized cost and an optimum capex for the project. Another leg will be technology. At Nordex, we are working on Delta 4000 technology, latest generation, most recent generation, rotors of 163 meters, nominal powers reaching 6 mg's, possibility of going with towers up to 164 meters height. It is not what is needed in Guajira because of the vertical wind um, levels. And so another leg of technology that allows us to have a low capex and support it on the scale that we have, it is the own te proprietary technology. We have the possibility of providing steel towers. We also have those that will be in cement, 350 people that enables the manufacturing on site on a very close by city of towers, a very competitive price. Also a local, positive local impact that it is that the personnel that will be hired to build those towers will be from the region. Fourth leg that we have already been mentioning that is very important for um, the projects is financing for that project, facilitate, that has been said, an ECA investor group, investment group, facilitate access and contact with commercial banking and have a bankable agreement in order to have a competitive year. Very clear, Federico, undoubtedly with all aspects that have been well covered in order to traduce risk and maximize uh, energy. It is very difficult to be in disagreement with what Federico has just mentioned. It is very important, particularly in wind at uh, the Guajira, and all those that are present in the Colombian market, we see that they have great uh, resources, um, one of the most important worldwide. But us as technologies, I think that we have been having a technological evolution We see that the manufacturers are releasing and releasing new technologies every day. They don't stop of releasing new technologies. So every year, machines have an uh, obsolescence that is so impressive. Two years about ago, we talked about Rotus 136. That, wow, it was great. But this is n not now the case. Uh, we have 170 meters with nominal capacity, six uh, commands MGs, and this has been done in an accelerated pace. So take, we need to understand that as technologists and we have to adapt to it in order to consider them in very important lo locations like, like the Guajira, and that is the differential. Uh, other things that can impact the infrastructure, the governor has already mentioned this, it is positive that the authorities understand you cannot have technologies with large size uh, generators at the end if you cannot 
transport and all the cost of transporting them is very high. You have to have also the port uh, structure and it is very important to reduce capex for those projects. The more you work on a project, the better. We have seen in many experiences where we have been involved in layouts of projects how they can be optimized in order to have a good outcome. And we think the developers, when they share with us the information on the project, so we can have more time and work better. Some just disclose information when you have the CPs and then we don't have the time to make the right analysis. The more you know the park, the more you examine it, the, the better um, forecast you can do. You can have layouts, optimizations that sometimes make the difference. Well, talking about infrastructure on transmission, that is an important factor in a wind farm to be able to reach the consumption. My opinion is that yes, it is true, the larger the parks, they are much more cost effective for a country for a market, we can say that it is mature when you have 50 mg farms that are cost effective because not everybody has them. We see that the, the, the we see that difference in the markets that have rich maturity. Um, OPEX, well. It has less frequency of maintenance, and we see that with machines with higher nominal position, we will have less machines in order to have the power. And I think that in OPEX, where there's a lot of potential, it has to do with the stall capacity and not necessarily an option from one manufacturer than another. The location will give you the trend to choose your OPEX, but it is good to have a little bit of everything because that will also encourage labor on the region. You will have trained personnel that to have a high OPEX, and I don't have a doubt that that all side inside with installations. And I think that's it on my side. We are reaching the end of our panel. I would just like to briefly make a summary of all of the actions that you have been taking specifically for us to be able to develop these energies in the region. Of course, with this inclusion of the different communities as part of this work and just developing and establishing all of the infrastructure of all of this. Also, we have been discussing with some technicians and experts who are just, just somehow going to work just to enable this through all of this work in these companies that are also devoted to this financial side of that. And they also rather working with this corporate credit as we need to link all of this to this infrastructure, electrical infrastructure as part of this with the sponsors. All of this is also recognized as part of the work that we have. And even a little bit more than the actions that have been taken for this project. So just to summarize, I would ask you to just share your comments regarding this funding of this wind power projects that we have on the pipework. 
so well i can tell you that ifc is a project that we are using just for us to be able to fund projects but more importantly or mainly what we see in this type of projects in this area there's a challenge that is going to be a little bit difficult to address from a standpoint it may have been perhaps easier to address just by having a better public private partnership let's say allocation if we do not do this then this public private agreement is not going to be like that. This PPA is not going to be more visible in terms of cost. And it is going to just make everything much more difficult. Do you think that there are some, let's say, distances that are some gaps in terms of what's going to be managed or negotiated? To be honest, I do not know. It may be difficult, but to be honest, in consideration of the situation, in consideration of COVID, that also caused some other extra terms and some delays, all of that, well, would lead us to think that perhaps there may be some sort of openness from the government for them to do all of this. But to be honest, this is something that, well, something that is part of the government's actions. I think the government is already aware. so. We just need to somehow just approach all of this and just put the focus in these actions as well. Danielle, any comments, questions? I agree with what Maria, what, what Maria Victoria is saying. It's not that we have any sort of preference, let's say, for certain corporations or the like. What I'm trying to say here is that these two actions are quite important as well. Another important part, according to what Federico is saying, is that we need to optimize these projects. Projects are being optimized. It's, it's very important. I think that it's important for us to be able to somehow just get to get to all of this funding or sources of funding. We have multilateral banking. All of this is going to play a significant role because they have a lot to contribute with. And well, this is something that is happening. So I believe that as part of these structures, we need to be more creative because these renewable assets are more and more similar to this let's say financial structure where we have some positive risk and we have let's say interconnection and other points that are also important to discuss so all of that is going to be important if we start thinking about this electrical power plant for instance all of this is going to entail certain risks as well and very long processes so after we have already discussed and addressed this i think that we will have a certain area or space for us to be able to address this in a better way. So we need to take all of these funding sources into account for us to be able to make, let's say, the best mix, to put it that way. And also, I think that the social management, as you mentioned, it is also very important because we do agree that this infrastructure works need to have some sort of positive impact both in, term of, in terms of the environment and also in terms of the society as, as a whole. So the, the order is for us to be able to do things in the proper way as they were intended to, to be done, that this is all part of or, or how we're going to be working for us to just follow the best practices, just for us to be able to handle and manage all of this. So we have also had great interest for us to be able to start just participating and taking part in all of this roundtables that the government has started just to hold as part of this development and according to the terms that have been established by the government for La Guajira region and for these projects, all of this is key. It is very important for us to be really aware on how these projects work with just by taking some sort of positive impact into account. Okay, so the only advertisement or let's say piece of notice that I just wanted to share with you is that the former project manager of the company where we used to work, him and myself, which is IMSA in the Venezuelan side. So all of these social and technical risks are very important. My apologies, Emerson, Mati, and well, please go ahead. All right. Nortex a couple of years ago decided to become the leader in the Colombian market for that reason. Well, we're going to be the very first ones. We're going to be part of this 
a huge project in the country that is going to be very good. So I, well, in terms of funding, I just wanted to open this invitation for our suppliers and to vendors and to all of these investors just for them to be able to do this. We are also going to offer our financial assistance for us to be able to well fund this type of project you have my contact information you're going to get it through this event we're we'll going to have some other colleagues who are going to also take part into this type of models and in nordex we have an internal structure that is quite flexible and that has been conceived or designed for us to be able to make efficient quick decisions and also we're going to be able to get very fast answers from our side. So that's pretty much what I wanted to say, just to sh just invite you all and just to just somehow invite you for you to take part into these actions that we are conducting in Colombia. All right. Thank you so much. Great insights, great perspectives. I think that Regina was great, a great moderator. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Muchas gracias a, a, a todos. Muy buenas perspectivas, como siempre, y um, muy buena moderación uh, de Regina también. Um, um, I've also seen that there are some questions from the audience that came through that weren't able to be answered. I would encourage you to follow up with some of the panelists. Uh, there were some good questions in there, so good, good engagement, and thank you for that. We come to the end of the of the official program panel for today. We still have some exciting sessions planned over the next couple of hours, including the technical breakout sessions from UL and also from Leosphere, as well as two side events organized by our platinum sponsor, Siemens Gamesa Renewable Energy. I would encourage you to still use the networking function and also check out the virtual expo, which will be open um, in perpetuity. So um, please head to the sessions uh, tab on the left-hand side of your screen as we did earlier for the UL technical breakout session, where they'll be reviewing there and giving a, um, a showcase of the renewables asset monitoring platform. Thank you very much and see you there. Thank you. Gracias otra vez.